So we're just going to look briefly at the different types of work you can do on the head, the pros and cons of it, and just give you an indication on how to avoid some of the common pitfalls that people have when they start working on the head. We're going to look at porting the engine. This is optimizing the airflow into the head itself. There's some major considerations to make just to maximize that airflow into your engine. And if you do it right, you will see better power gains and improved throttle response and how much power we can actually make. Now we're thinking particularly of the curtain area. This is the gap that opens up around the valve as it opens. And we're gonna look at ways of optimizing that curtain to get as much airflow around the valve into the engine and out of the engine as possible. <laughs> So we're going to move our attention onto the head of the engine, which is doing a lot of work in channeling the air, the fuel, and taking the exhaust gases away from the engine as efficiently as possible. So there's a few different areas that you need to look at just to maximize the airflow through this area. And I will have to say, really, this is not a DIY job. The newer your engine, the less benefit you will get from paying attention to head work. And generally, because it is so complex and involved and the gains are rather negligible, it's only really worth doing if you've got the head off so if you need to change a head gasket or there's some other issue maybe you're swapping the head for a, a better one then it's the time you've already got the work in dismantling the thing so it'd be good to just make sure it's in the best condition it can be and to fully optimize the airflow through the head into the engine so we're not going to be ultra nerdy there is so much science behind this so many calculations I've read so many different rules of thumb many of them are contradictory and the problem comes about the fact that every single single engine is unique they've all got different airflow characteristics so you really do need to see a specialist that understands your engine and your aims for it and again any kind of head work tends to increase the flow of air into the engine so it's something that's going to affect the higher rpm power figures and sometimes at the detriment of the low end torque that you would get from the engine so it's certainly not a mod that everyone will think about so the head of the engine is that bit that bolts on to the top of the cylinders and it's got a series of channels that allow the exhaust gases to exit the engine but the important bit we're going to focus on are the inlet channels which allow the fresh air into the engine so if you've got direct injection you've just got airflow coming in through there if you've got some kind of port injection set up on your engine then the fuel and the air is going to be mixed somewhere along the intake as it goes into the valves and into the engine itself so there's a few subtle differences but the basic way that air flows into an engine is quite important if there's a lot of turbulence that will slow up the airflow and slow moving air is really bad for your engine it reduces its efficiency on that intake stroke it's not able to get as much air into the engine as it otherwise would do and it also affects the way that the fuel and air actually mixes inside the engine you want a really fast efficient flow of air going into your engine through the valves with a minimal amount of turbulence so fitting larger valves is a good way of allowing more air into the engine but the most commonly held misconception that people have is that you've got your valve and your valve seats and the valve itself and that the air goes directly around the valve into the engine and that is actually not quite true when you start looking on a flow bench and look at the way the air flows into the head on the screen now you can see a, a depiction of how the air would typically flow into the head the red area show the spots where there is turbulence or restrictions in the airflow and going down to blue where the airflow is relatively slow. So you can see that the air is coming into the engine at an angle almost across the top of the valves. So when you're looking at improving the airflow in the engine, you've really got to look at those hot spots of where the air is moving at the fastest point and where there is any restrictions or turbulence being created. And the object of the exercise is really to smooth those out, to let the air into the engine as effectively as possible. So changing the angle that the air will take across the valves is another objective of a lot of these porting jobs. It's a lot more involved and it depends very much on the design of the head itself, where the channels are, where the ancillaries bolt on around the head. But if you want to do it properly and take it to motorsport levels, there's certainly an argument for completely remachining those angles. They tend to weld up the open ports and cut new ports into the engine across the valves. So what actually is porting on the engine? Well, the ports are the things on the head that you bolt the exhaust manifold headers onto and the intake manifold. So there are a series of holes at the side of the engine which allow the air into the head itself. So 
If there's a step there between the header or the port itself or the intake manifold and the port itself, it's going to cause a lot of turbulence. So the aim generally is to maximize the flow of air through that part of the engine itself, just to make sure that the, the changeover is seamless. You need to be very careful here. You're thinking very much about keeping the velocity of the air up. So if it was too wide, you may well end up slowing up that airflow itself. So you need to be very careful with setting up the actual port of the head itself. It's certainly not something you can do on a DIY basis. We used to do it years ago when the heads were generally really badly made and the manifolds and exhaust headers were generally cast so there was lots of rough surfaces inside them, lots of imperfections and there was usually a great big differential between the port and manifold itself. So some people also look to enlarge the ports. Now you've got to be careful doing that. You don't want the exhaust to come along a wide channel and then suddenly go into a, a narrow channel. You want to keep things fairly consistent for a, the longest period you actually can within the engine. If you've got to have a step difference in its size, it's certainly worth doing it gradually and having a, a graduated flow either to a larger size or to a smaller size rather than having a step in there. So that's certainly something that you can think about. Inside the head, the chambers that take the airflow into the engine and the exhaust gases out of the engine are generally quite badly designed on a lot of cars. There's, there's a few out there that have got really nice chamber designs, um, but you can usually open those up and smooth them out and really dramatically alter the flow going into the engine. You really want to also make sure that the airflow with all of the ports is balanced. So bear in mind that some of those ports have longer runs to get to the engine. If you've got a exotic engine like the VR6 or a boxer engine, that is more true than ever. So on most six cylinder and four cylinder engines, things are fairly consistent within the head and the engine itself. But as soon as you go away from that, you start looking at very big differences in, in the lengths of the pipes going into the engine. So it's something that needs to be balanced. So you're not just balancing the length, you want to balance the flow or the velocity of air through each of those, just to make sure that the engine is running at its peak efficiency. Now the seat around the valves, people often cut a three or five angle valve job which just takes off the rough edge around the valve intake itself and it just allows the air to flow more freely into the engine and just encourages better mixing. I had it done on one of my early cars, it was a Rover 220 GTI so that had the two litre Rover engine in it and when I had the five angle valve job done on that particular engine I noticed more low down power and better fuel economy. I'd only done other minor mods on that car, so I hadn't added a turbocharger or done anything too drastic. It was just the typical exhaust, air filters, and getting the head sorted out. I had to rebuild the bottom end, but I, I chose fairly standard components for that. Just I was, at the time, just wanting a reliable engine. But it was interesting, the significant difference such a small thing made on my enjoyment of the engine. Now, it's not something you can really do yourself. You need a flow bench. You really do need to know what you're doing. And a lot of the experts out there that claim to know what they're doing when it comes to flowing heads don't fully understand how the air flows into the engine. They've either just not been properly trained or they've not actually seen this specific engine they're working on on a flow bench. So they're working to some fairly rough parameters in their mind or some understandings that they've picked up over the years. I do worry when I see people on YouTube taking apart an engine and just going at it with some sort of grinding wheel because it is a really specialized area. It certainly is possible to get gains from removing those imperfections from the casting process. And manufacturers didn't really want to mess around too much with working inside the head itself. It's a process that will typically take you about 10 or 11 hours. So you can understand why a manufacturer didn't want to put that much effort into refining the heads. That's back in the day where emissions regulations weren't as critical as they are today. So a lot more thought and design goes into the actual engines today. So you can really ruin the gas flow into the engine itself if you do this wrong. So it is a specialized job. It's certainly not worth taking your engine apart just to perform some kind of head work on it. The gains you'll get compared to the cost and the effort involved it is minimal. But if you've got the head off for whatever reason, maybe you're changing the gasket or there's something else that needed replacing or you're just swapping the head for a different one, it certainly makes sense to do a little bit of work on that head while you have the opportunity to do so. So on a lot of heads you'll notice that just across from the valves there is some kind of block 
and that actually helps to divert that flow of air going through the valves and spits it directly into the cylinder itself rather than just it hitting the edge of the cylinder. It allows the engine to fill up with air much more easily and certainly aids the burning of the fuel mixture. So changing that angle dramatically can have adverse effects on the engine, the way it performs, the economy that you get. And with a lot of head work, you're actually just raising the peak power. What you're doing is you're increasing the channel dimensions or the airflow and that higher airflow is more beneficial at higher RPMs. Those bigger channels actually flow less quickly at low RPMs so you can well lose a little bit of low down power and low down torque. It depends very much what sort of head work you've actually carried out on the engine itself. So polishing around the valves inside the cylinder head itself can actually reduce the carbon buildup allegedly. Having a polished surface it makes it harder for the carbon to stick to that. So when the inside of the engine is nicely polished it helps to resist detonation and you're also aiming to remove corners, sharp edges and rough spots because these typically would become hot points that again raise the risk of detonation or premature ignition in your engine. Some people talk about polishing the headers and the intake manifold itself. So the theory is that if it's nice and smooth there's no turbulence so it would certainly allow the exhaust gases to flow more readily out of the engine. In reality it doesn't usually make a massive difference and it's often quite hard to do depending on the design of the engine's headers itself. So Polishing on the exhaust side is probably something worth considering if you're being fastidious and you want the maximum amount of power to be released and it's something that you can do on most cars and most projects. But on the intake side, particularly with port injection, those little imperfections help the fuel atomization so you get better fuel atomization with the air going into the engine. So there is certainly a case for saying that polishing the intake side is not always the optimum setup for you. So a gas flowed head really has optimized all of the flow that goes into the engine itself and you can see improvements with manufacturing over the years. Early engines had very poor designs, the valves tended to be quite square and quite chunky. There was lots of scope for turbulence, those older engines were not particularly efficient. They seem to be quite reliable but that's because they weren't operating anywhere near their capabilities. So if you're not pushing the engine to its capabilities it's going to be more reliable, there's no scope there for it to break down. But on modern engines things are much more refined. Computer aided design certainly plays its part when they come to designing the heads of engines and a lot of engines are actually really well set up from the factory. I'm thinking particularly of those in something like the Honda S2000. It's really hard to improve on what the factory have done with regard to head flow and getting the air into the cylinders itself. So it really does pay to go to someone who understands your engine. They're not all the same, they've all got idiosyncrasies they all require slightly different designs in the chambers that go into the ports and also around the ports themselves where the valves sit for the maximum amount of power to be released. It's a relatively expensive mod, it's certainly not something that you'll just be thinking of doing on your family runaround but if you've done all the other tuning options on your car and you're really trying to push those top power figures and something is just holding you back it could well be the head. So get the head done, get larger valves fitted and make sure that the airflow through the head into the engine is as optimised as possible. So I hope you found this video interesting and informative. We've got more detail coming up on the various aspects of porting and polishing the head of the engine and uh, getting the maximum amount of power from your car. So please subscribe, we'd love you to stay tuned and if you could drop us a like we'd really appreciate that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.